um, working with our new mixes and stuff. So bear with me here just a second as I see that I am up and running and that I'm up and running. I see I just got the notification for Facebook, so I think you guys are seeing me now here. Let me just make sure that I can see you. There we go. Great, I'm seeing you guys here. Let me make sure I can see you guys on YouTube as well. Looks like we're live. I hope that everything is gonna be free and clear with our feed. Um, so I will say at the beginning as a caveat, if anything drops, if our internet connection goes down, don't worry, I'll be back, so stay tuned. But I think that we're in pretty good shape. Uh, it looks pretty nice and clear to me. Um, hopefully it's nice and clear to you. Um, and there it is. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, so it's Friday here at BeadShop.com and oh, where you are as well, unless you're watching us way, I don't know, later in another time zone, I don't know. But today is Friday, March 29th. And so everything that we're doing today, um, the mix that I'm working with, for those of you who follow our newsletter and follow our social media, you'll know that I just... Um, created a really fantastic, wonderful mix here. I just saw something go by, hang on. Michelle is asking me if I'm using a Cat5 cable or a Sax Cat6 cable. Hold that thought a second, Michelle. Um, I will double check. I think it's a Cat5, but I'll have to look. Would a Cat6 be better? Question mark. Message me on Facebook, we'll talk. Because let me tell you, not only are my beating skills uh, up and running. Oh, she just said, might try a Cat6 cable. I'm gonna check that right after we get off, uh, after we get off the broadcast. You know, one of the things, and then I'll get back to our order, our, our uh, project at hand. I am learning that you are never too old to learn something new. Now, I have always had some computer skills, right? I started with my Apple Macintosh back in, I don't know, 80, 86 maybe. My roommate had one in college uh, with a dot matrix printer. So I've been always been pretty, and I took a, a coding class back in high school. That was in 1984. It was one of the first computer classes out there at Gilroy High School. Uh, so I've always been pretty computer savvy, but I'll tell you what, I have had an IT small business networking education in the past week. So you are never, ever, ever too old to learn something new. Yeah, I back in 1984, we used the, you know, we had to run colon forward slash. We had to make our little guy walk up and around the screen. I was the only girl in class. It was A period. My mom will remember it, it didn't really stick that long. I think I did the senior play then the next semester instead of doing that A period. But it was good. It was it was interesting. So I've always been very um, not afraid of computers. And this week <laughs> tested my fear already. So back, uh, back to our project that we've got going on. So as I said, today's um, project is very it was it was of the moment you know I make these mixes we put them up on the website and then they're, they're gone that's it and I'm sorry I can't recreate them for you um, but it's things that I buy that are limited supply and they're kind of fun so if you missed out and you're like oh man come on I missed out on my kit not to worry number one I've got plenty of kits planned for the future you'll get your kit. The next one will be even better than this. Number two, I thought this morning as I was washing my hair in the shower, because as you know, all my ideas come to me in the shower, uh, all my best ones, I thought I can color palette with the best of them, right? Let me make a fresh color palette with products that we have a lot of here at Bead Shop that we normally carry, so you can get the feeling of the El Dorado project and um uh, but with different beads 
okay? So we, so I'm gonna show you that. I'm going to uh, pull this kit out. We're gonna look at this. And then we're gonna look at the things that I pulled. Now, I have a whole list of what we used. It's right here in front of me on my table. And I've listed it already on the blog. Okay, so if you don't know our blog, The Bead Table, uh, The Bead Table is an excellent resource for you. Um, it's up there, ready to go, and you can see right here, um, my, I've got my list, as I'm folding it up so it's nice and small, like this. This is the list right here. And you can go right over to the blog, The Bead Table. It's the latest post. If you don't follow our blog, I don't know what you're waiting for. Get over there, follow the blog. You'll get a notification every time um, new content goes up. I, and uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit, don't really forget, at the end of the broadcast, we've got some other things that are debuting on the blog um, this week and two. So I've got those sitting right over here on this side of me, okay? So let me move the camera around. Uh, and so bear with me again, I'm my own camera woman today, so bear with me. And I'm also going to turn on the lights because I forgot to do that before uh, I did, okay, before I went on. So I'm going to brighten the lights and uh, get things going here on our broadcast today. So let's take a look. Hopefully these lights actually make a difference. I don't know if they do, but... I'm gonna turn them on anyway and see if they do. Hopefully that'll be helpful. And I'm gonna bring this camera around. We've got this new camera arm, which I really love. It's made doing these moves, these camera moves, so much easier for us. Someday we're going to be so fancy that you're not even going to notice us, or not even going to notice us, not even going to notice these camera moves. So you can see, there you go, you can see all three of my screens right there. I captured them right on the camera. You can see that I've got, um, got a little bit of a shadow there. Let me, just bear with me. I want to get rid of that shadow, okay? Um, and I want to make it just a hair brighter. So just bear with me while I fix on my own production assistant. You know, we're not afraid here at the old beadshop.com to be your own production assistant, I guess. Though if anyone wants to learn, <laughs> you can come on and join me and me and Brandon on Wednesdays and me on Fridays. But, uh, you know, we've, we're multitasking. I'm going to put up this one more light here. Again, thanks for bearing with me on this. You know, on Fridays, it's always, uh, we're always so stoked that the weekend is close. And we're always happy, you know, that we're, there we go, that looks a little better, that we're so close to our rest day, or at least a work-at-home day for me, uh, that... Things always get a little crazy around here. So there we go. Alrighty. Okay. So I'm going to see if I can adjust my lights just a little bit. You know, see how we're... There, maybe that's better. I don't know. Let's see. Let me get my hands in the shot. That's not too bad. Okay. Um, alrighty. Okay. That looks alright. Okay. So let's talk about, first of all... Um, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make this screen just a little brighter as well. So bear with me here just a moment while I do that. Plus it gives everybody a chance to jump in, I guess, maybe. So let's see. And I'm gonna make this a little bit brighter and you guys tell me uh, what you think. Okay. Yeah, always learning, always getting there. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. That's what I'm going to go with today, you guys, because you guys are ready to see me work. Okay, so um, let me get out the original kit, okay? And you guys just jumped in on it, which thank you 
for that. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed it and loved it like we did, like we do. Let me push the camera up just a little bit here. There we go. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a shadow with these things, but let's see if I can move this cord just a hair. There we go. Okay, and make sure it's pretty bright on my screen. So make sure you guys that, um, let me try this here too. Um, make sure that your brightness on your device is um, all, um, all good as well. Okay, there we go. So here's my dish. This is our dish that we mix. Um, out. So I'm actually gonna hold this off for just a second. Um, I'm going to dump in the pearls right here. Okay, we can see the pearls. There they are. And then I have this whole group right here of stuff that I pull. And I'm gonna show you uh, what those are. I'll go over the list. If you are on your laptop for this, there we go, that's a little bit better. Look at that, I got rid of the shadow. That was bugging me. I don't know about you guys, but it was bugging me. Um, if you are on like your desktop device, you could open another, um, another tab if you wanted and follow along with what we've got here uh, on this. And it's all linked, so you'll be able to, um, to see what we've got. There we go. Okay, that looks a lot better. Okay, because colors are of the essence here. So this is the original, and we're gonna look through that in just a second, but what I grabbed, um, because I wanted to have the feeling of the El Dorado Pearl Mix, I'm gonna get in tight, a little bit tighter so you guys can see this. And the El Dorado pearls, they're kind of a bunch of greens and coppers and brass, and uh, there's a little bit of blue in there too. There's all kinds of prettiness in there. And here's the, um, I'll show you here, here's the finished piece for it, okay? So I took the essence of what was going on here. And this morning when I got in, I started pulling beads off the wall and I needed to make sure, because I couldn't order for it, right? I had to make sure that we had enough in stock because people hopefully will want to get them if they didn't get their pearl mixes. Um, and so I just started palleting. So I kept this in my mind's eye on this side, okay? And I went in and the bead that I, that I started with, that I jumped in and threw in my little basket was this. It's the four millimeter opaque yellow copper Picasso. And to me, this color kind of summed up the everything about this necklace, right? So that was my starting point. All right, so I'm gonna just cut this up. I'm gonna put it in our mixing bowl. You're gonna see this mixing bowl again uh, on Wednesday's episode. This is the actual mixing bowl that we mix our monthly mixes in, how we start it. I know we have a special bowl because we're silly that way, we're funny. I'm gonna come in a little bit tighter so it's nice and tight up there, okay? So here's this. And then the next one I went to uh, was, I wanted something, so I knew that this was kind of um, opaque or an opaque, a small opaque kind of uh, bead. So I wanted something transparent. And again, I felt like this aquamarine celsian in six millimeter also captured the look of, of this necklace. So I grabbed that off the wall and I'm gonna cut that up in just a second. Let me, uh, Bear with me here just a moment here. There we go. Okay. I just wanted to adjust something here. Okay, so we did, so I grabbed that one. I'm going to go ahead and take this and cut it up and add it to the bowl. Okay. It's like we're cooking. It's like my Friday cooking show. Hello, everyone, except I'm cooking with beads today, not with, not with food. Alrighty. 
So then what I did was I, I kept going along the fire polish wall and I grabbed in quick succession these three, which are the iris brown in six millimeter, the chocolate bronze in six millimeter, which is coated with real bronze. It has a real bronze flash to it. And then the center one is the nebula wasabi. Okay, and these three I felt also really spoke to this original. Okay, so I'm going to cut these up and we'll add them to the bowl. Right, and this is how when I made this original mix with the pearls. This is just how I did it, though I did it quickly because I was I was palleting on the fly there. But I did this quickly. I do a lot of my palettes in a pretty quick, um, pretty quickly, and then I go back in and I refine them a little bit. So you can see. So here's our mix so far, and you can see. Let me hold it up next to this one. We're getting kind of that flavor of it, right? We're getting kind of that. Um, I don't know, kind of that same kind of vibe that we've got going on here. Then I thought, well, I needed one more fire polish that added um, a little bit of texture. And even though I don't have a silver in this mix, there is, like, look at this pearl that's right here. It kind of is kind of a silvery blue pearl. And I'll just tell you, I feel like these etched, we've got these four millimeter, we've got them four millimeter etched. And I think um, we also have them, I think we have them in the six too, uh, the etched beads. I adore the etched, so I was gonna use them. And you can see, if I hold it really close up to the camera so you guys can see it, I don't know if it's in focus or not there, but the actual coating on the bead is a little, I don't know what, how Emily would say it, Emily would say it's kind of crusty right, which I love. So this, I think, is a fantastic one. Okay, so I uh, will cut this up and put this down. And the mix, this exact mix that I'm putting in this bowl, you guys, it's over on the blog. So if you go just over to the bead table, click, and it's, um, it's the first one. It's the one that's right up there. I know my mom is mentioning, she's so funny, she mentions that my grand, my grand loved brown, my little grand rose, my mom's mother. And right when I first started working at bead shop, um, let me just tell you what these are real quick, then I'll continue my story. I added the rondelles, ivory mercury, champagne mix, and then a larger one, amber Picasso. So let me cut these up and add them. So Gran uh, came to the bead shop, uh, I don't know, when I first started working there. And she picked out, this was actually, it wasn't actually when I first started working there. She came to when we had our store in San Jose. And I think she must have come with my mom. And she uh, always loved brown. She loved brown. And so she found this little bead uh, in and amongst our beads. It's a little fish bead. And she said, oh, Katie, honey, I love this little fishy bead. She said, just wrap it up for me so I could wear it on a necklace. So it is so true. So when my grand passed away, I sent her off with uh, that little fishy bead as well. So, uh, but she loved her. I remember I wire wrapped it and I put it on some brown rat tail and she wore that sucker forever. So funny. Um, so here we go. Here are our two color palettes. Check it out. It actually is looking pretty good, I think. I thought, though, I needed a pearl just as a nod to this mix. And this pearl mix has kind of a bluish pearl in it. So I got our five millimeter blue iris potato pearl. Though, you know, if you love our pearls, you know, pearls are so, um, they're hard to get you know, a batch that you can get again and again and again with freshwater pearls. So our pearls do change slightly between batch to batch. These blue iris ones that we have right now are really blue. Um, they add a lot, they add some nice color in there. Um, so, uh, so you will sometimes see a little bit of a variation. 
Now in this mix also that we have in the pearl mix, I found, and I never see these, they are huge, huge green freshwater pearls, which I adored. But I thought we wanted something that had a little bit of a say something to it. So I got the Saturns and I threw in five of the Saturns, bam. I wanted a seed bead and in, and I didn't want to use the same one. I wanted to use one that was a little different. The seed bead that I used in the mix is the gilding mat in a Lebanon. And it's something that we carry on our website. So um, you don't have to worry about that. We do carry these guys if you wanted them. But I wanted to add something a little bit different with this one, so I added the copper version of it. Okay, what a surprise, Kate added copper. And I thought for the button, I would add our peach pearl button, because why not? And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use that uh, as well on the button. So let's take a look, now that we've created this mix, okay, I am gonna make things a little bit bigger here in front of me. I'll move these over. And let's take a look at how this piece, how the actual kit piece is put together. Now you saw I spoke about these, and I'll get kind of close so you guys can see it. I spoke about this button uh, a little earlier, um, uh, yesterday on the broadcast when I was doing my testing for um, our camera setup. And it looks like it's pretty good. I don't want to jinx it, but our broadcast is looking pretty strong, which thank you to the streaming gods is going pretty well. Um, but I, so what I wanted uh, was kind of an interesting little, I don't know, say something piece on the end. So I found these buttons, there were exactly, I think there were actually like 103 or something, but there were a very limited supply. And I found them from a supplier that I've been using for, I don't know, almost 25 years. And he, uh, he had these, he kind of pulled them out from behind the table and said, Kate, have you seen these? And I'm all, I have not. So these are precious little buttons that he got in Burma that are meant to be used on clothing uh, rather than jewelry, but I thought it would be perfect. So I used this, and then I found this charming little um, Chinese crystal, and this cut rondelle, which I also thought looked really nice with this piece. So those were kind of the little extras that I found in there. So that button um, is just created with a loop. I made a loop with my seed beads and then it's, um, I, I crimped it down here. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do this connection here, but I'm gonna do it using this, what we call our pearl button. This is actually a pearl bead, right? But I'm gonna use it like a button, okay? We do this, we've done that on our poetry project, our bead shop classic, which is the poetry. Um, we've got it on there. So, uh, so many of you are very familiar with it. But the way we use it is we string up the button and then back down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire wrap it for you today, okay? So uh, I get the, uh, this is the small, it's the one and a half inch uh, copper head pin. It's in um, t uh, 24 gauge, any thicker, and this pearl button eh, won't, really the wire won't really fit in the pearl button and i'm gonna see i i don't know if i'm gonna use it or not but there we go i've got a few of these little guys out uh i'm gonna see how i like a little seed bead at the very top it might stick out too much and i might say no but let's see what it looks like so i'm gonna prepare my button and we have these peach ones in peach it's very light peach uh or we also have them in white it used to be that you could find freshwater pearl shapes all over the place. You could find these flat ones, you could find stick pearls, you could find so many things, um, but it, now they're just not found like they used to. You know, if I had something flat, like a little piece of hishi or a little something, I don't know, maybe I do. Maybe I'll get out the metal box. That 11 aught was a little too tall, right? A little too high, I didn't like it. 
But you could just use the, um, you know, the head pin if you wanted. But maybe I want just, I think I've got a little, you know, a little heishi bead, a little flat one right here that I'm just going to put over the top. Let's see if the head of the, um, if the head of the head pin pulls through it. Let's see, because that's something, again, you have to test it. I grabbed two little pieces of heishi just from our little random metal box there. Let's see if it pulls through. It actually doesn't, so that's a good, that's good. So see there? Look at how nice that looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go with that. If you feel like if you have head pins at home that really don't fit, you could put a little seed bead or something in there too to nestle it, okay? So let me just go ahead and wire wrap this. I'm gonna go pretty quickly with the wire wrapping. Now you have seen me wire wrap always, you know, a lot. So I'm not gonna go over it too much here because we've got other stuff to cover. But you can go to our website, beadshop.com, as you know. If you go under our um, skill builders on our projects page, you will see our wire wrap, our wire wrapping tutorial, which is great. And if you peruse all of our Facebook Lives and Free Tip Fridays, you will see me wire wrap again and again. Now, I do want to mention about this wire wrap. I am making the neck on this pearl. Sorry, I need to get it. Sorry, I need to get a little closer in my frame and then I'll pull it right back. Sorry, I, I need to see it a little more closely. There we go. What I did with the neck on this, I needed to make it a little longer so that when the loop came around, this button, the shank of now what's the button, uh, it'll it'll sit nicely. Okay, so uh, let me cut away this extra. Oh, someone has taken my wire cutters from Mayday, Mayday, from my tool um, caddy here. Are they in my... I'm gonna have to call in reinforcements. Let me see, I must have a cutter here somewhere. There we go, I've got one. You know what, I was probably the culprit carrying this cutter around, so it's no one's fault but my own, right? So let me cut this away. Let me cut away this extra. I'm just gonna clip it. I'm gonna get a little close to my line of sight. There we go, and I'm gonna just push in the end there. Okay, so our button's ready. Now let me show you how I attached. Yeah, it was Alfie. So true. It was Alfie. So this is now a button. This is ready. Okay, it's ready to go. So uh, you can see in the sample here, see how in the sample I used a wire guard. Okay. Just like this. Here's the wire guard here, and the wire guard's coming, gonna come around the shank of the button and then uh, crimp on there. And there's a question here. I wanna go back and I wanna see. Denise is asking, um, oh, are you not concerned that the pearl button is too fragile? She had a problem with the mother of pearl button. Yeah, so this is actually a freshwater pearl, Denise. Um, rather than a mother of pearl button. Like a mother of pearl, like a regular mother of pearl button that you would put, you know, on a shirt or whatever, would be much thinner. This guy is pretty thick, and I don't have my calipers in front of me, but um, this is at least, a, I don't know, maybe three millimeters, four millimeters in width. So it's, it's, nice and, uh, it's nice and sturdy, so you won't have any trouble. It does give you kind of that same pretty look that a mother of pearl um, button would give you, but we've used these and used these and we're super happy with them. So that's a great and excellent, excellent question uh, for that. So, uh, okay, so let me uh, do the wire guardian. And I'm gonna just do this in a just a quick little end so you guys can see it. 
I'm not going to string this whole thing because you can uh, you can kind of see it. Um, I chose the softflex I chose for this colorway. Um, I chose the uh, copper, but I'll tell you, you could use any color. <laughs> really, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever because it's really not going to be seen. But this is the fine. It's the 0 0.014. Softflex, softflex metallics, it's the copper color. Um, and it fits really, really nice um, uh, on there. And you can, Whitney uh, asked, can we please have a roadmap photo of the limited edi edition necklace somewhere? Yes, if you go, it's actually linked on the projects. And I think Janice, it's already linked. I think Karen got it up there already. So if you wanna double check, if you go to uh, beadshop.com, and you go to our projects, um, you see it. I'm just going to click over there and see. Sorry, I'm hitting the camera a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to go to projects. And yes, it's under Kate's Pearl Mix projects. You can see the old one, Cultured Girls, if you click on that. And if you click on LG Auto, which is there, and you scroll down to the bottom of that page, you see a nice project map of the whole thing. So yeah, we got we got you on that one. Don't you worry. We got you. Um, we got you, Whitney. Okay, so, and someone was asking me about the string material. Again, this is the soft flex here. So I'm going to go ahead and let's pretend that this was a long piece, right? And I might string the whole thing and do this last, or you can put it on one side and then keep going around and stringing and stringing, right? And then do the loop on the other side. But I'm gonna start by putting on this button. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna use my wire guard. And this is the little copper wire guard that looks like a little horseshoe. Can you guys see that? I'm gonna get real tight so you can, okay? Now, if you don't, some of you don't love wire guards and that's cool, you know, you do you. I love them. I think they look just fine. They don't look, you know, they kind of fade into the background. They cover up the stringing material. They add life to your projects, you know, actual life because your soft flex is protected from rubbing. So I'm going to go around and that wire guard is like a little horseshoe. And see when I pull the soft flex down, that it just sits right in the little kind of trough that's um, at the top of the wire guard. I want to make sure that I've got enough to eventually crimp. Okay, so now I'm going to put on my button like this. And I'm actually kind of doing this in reverse here. If I had beads down here, I would have actually put my crimp tube on. So let me actually get my crimp tube. I've got some copper crimp tubes here. We carry this kind of nice, what I'd say a four up kind of um, types of crimp tubes. They come in the black, the copper, the silver, and the gold plate. So I'm gonna get out some of these copper ones here and uh, let's get one out, shall we? And so uh, I'm gonna just pull a few of these out here just to make sure I've got enough to work with. And one of the things I think that people also do when they work with the wire guard and you forget to do it is see your little legs of the wire guard. I could come in, I need to come in, and I need to kind of squeeze them together so they make a nice closed loop. I just want them together next to each other, not on top, not too close. Okay. And Michelle was also observing um, about our French wire, and yes, French wire would look delicious on the end of this. And as Janice is mentioning, we have it in all of these great antiqued colors. So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to crimp this crimp tube on. And I'm going to use, oh, for crying out loud, my non-existent um, crimping plier. <laughs> Hang on. Hey, um, Kara or Jenny or somebody out there? I think the crimping plier that was taken from the studio never got returned over here. So I think I have one on my work table. OK, 
Can somebody grab it for me, please? I guess I need to check that my tools are all in place. What's that? Oh, uh-uh. Nay. Oh, there's one. I see one. There's one on the wall up here. I'll grab it. Yep, I got it. I do. Thanks, Kara. What would we do without Kara? Here it is. Here it is. I've got it. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to crimp this. Again, we don't need to worry about... Uh, I'm not gonna kind of belabor my crimping on this. We've got a whole bunch of crimping on our Softlex 101 broadcast and in our skill builders. Though I do want to um, show that this is the Zuron crimping plier that crimps the one, two, and three millimeter crimp tubes. It's really our, um, our crimping plier of choice here, okay? And so I've come, I've gotten this, and it's nice and closed, right? Check your crimp to make sure it's really nice and closed. I'll get in there real tight. I'm going to cut away my extra, so pardon me while I take it out of frame so I can see it to cut it. And I'm going to come in, and I'm going to put a crimp cover on it. Oh, Maggie Mae, thanks so much on the Fly Free Tip Friday vibe. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, I don't always, it totally is. It is so on the fly, totally, totally. Okay, so here's my cover. And I'm gonna place it around my crimp bead, my crimp tube, actually. Sorry, I, I've got, again, I've gotta get in my line of vision. My arms are too long for that one, there we go but I'll close it so you guys can see it. There we go, you can see that. And I'm just gonna come in and close that crimp cover right around the crimp tube. Sorry, I wanna get into frame here. Again, I need to look at it. Sorry, you guys. Like Emily was saying the other day, she couldn't quite see that far away. I should have started doing Free Tip Friday when I was a lot younger. There we go. <laughs> what I could see. There we go. So now it's nice and closed. Can you see that? How it's all in there? And I think this looks like a really just a super um, clean look. Okay, I'm going to make the frame a little bit bigger so you can see it. All right. So now that that's done, I can string and I'll be honest, you guys, I didn't think about it too much. In the sample that's here, uh, Emily and I were talking about it on Wednesday when I was wearing it on Wednesday. I used three um, seed beads in between, one, two, three. You can elongate this. This necklace that I made is about 65 inches or so here, the finished piece. If you added more um, of the of the seed beads in between, you could make it a lot longer if you wanted. In the kit, you have enough to do up to three in between. But you could, what I think would look also really cool, is you could add the um, little shadow in brass in here too, and I think it would really look great uh, in here for maybe another kind of a little nubby effect with the metal, but I think it looks great. But I just used the three. So let me um, dump out some of these 11 knots. These, as I said, it's the 11 knot metal seed bead. It's the antique copper. Um, and there's a lot in here. Um, so this will go a long way in the tube. So I'm gonna dump those out. And I think I'll just start, let me make everything a little bit bigger. I'm just going to reach in and grab a bead and put it on. It happened to be this one, the etched silver. So one, two, two, there we go, and three, there we go. And I'm going to string on another one and go one, two, and three. So I'm just going to string a few of these real quick and we're going to look at the effect, okay? So there we go. And just put them in the bowl. 
right? And this is way, can you see? This is way too many beads. I mean, this will make like two of these. So if you get the, the mix that I posted on the blog, I am venturing to guess that you'll have enough for at least two necklaces, okay? Um, Kim is saying she has the stick pearls. Would they work with this mix? Yes. Very briefly, last, I think it was last year, we had the, um, we had stick pearls on the website. I found them. Janice and I were in a warehouse. When we're in the warehouse, I go digging like way in back. And I was rewarded with finding a very limited supply of these amazing stick pearls. So we had them on the website for about a minute and then they went away. Um, but I'll, I'll keep looking. Really nice quality stick pearls um, sometimes are hard to find, um, which uh, when I see them, I like to grab them. Let me just do a couple more and then I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So bear with me here just a second. I'm gonna do this one, that opaque yellow Picasso. We were talking about Picasso finishes um, on Wednesday's show with the new Rembrandt and the new Picasso finishes on the Super Duos. And they really are just delish, all right? So one, two, and three. Let me put one more. And then let's take a look here. Okay, let me move this out of the way. So can you see, just with my stringing, and I'm going to get kind of up close and personal, and I'm going to put the um, pearl necklace next to it too, so you can see it. Okay, um, I'm going to do this right here. So you can see, there are my three in between. And I wanted to point out one thing that I do a lot when I am doing kind of these random stringings, um, is I do intentional repeats and I do a lot of, um, I don't know, intentional repeats of the small ones or the large ones. And you can see over here with these pearls, I've repeated them twice here. Um, so it just depends on if you want to do a little bit of repeating, that's awesome. And then as you get to one of the larger beads, like here's the Saturn that I pulled out for the mix, you just put it on and then you kind of continue to string. And as you go, you think, oh, I haven't gone for a while. I haven't put a big one on for a while. So you fish out another one of those Saturns and then you, um, you get another one. So, and we're gonna have more, this gilding mat that we had of the 11 knots that we put in the kit, um, they're just gorge and something that we usually carry. Um, Unfortunately, uh, when um, I went to check on ordering more of these, um, our manufacturer is actually out. They'll be back. So put yourself on the email waiting list um, for the matte ones. We have um, a nice amount of the other metal ones in too, but we've got so many, so you can substitute those as well. But the, um, the um, gilding matte ones. They'll be back. Don't you worry. They haven't gone on a permanent vacation. So you can see with this that I've made, there's that one there. Okay. So let me share the other side with you because we're coming almost to the end of our time together. But I wanted to share with you how to make the loop. Okay. So I'm going to come around and I'm just going to make the loop on this side. It's just going to be a teeny little thing here, but I'll show you how I do it. So I put on, um, I'm actually going to go back just a little so I have a little more room. Yeah, that'll do it. Um, so when I'm ready to end, I need to make sure that I have at least, I would say two inches, but actually I like three inches even more. This is even a little short. I'm going to put on my crimp tube. There's my crimp. And I need to visualize how many um, seed beads are going to make a loop that goes around that button. So I'm going to say I need a bunch. So bear with me as I string them on. I'm going to dump out a few more. 
Hey Chris, is that kitty cat around anywhere? Yeah, maybe he'll come visit. Maybe at the end. That naughty kitty, he likes to come on Fridays. So he's here today. Alfie. You know, do you guys know what Monday is? Monday is Alfred's birthday. He's going to be a whole year. Can you believe it's been a year since we found that dusty little kitten underneath the bush at the cement plant down the street from our office? I know, that little baby is going to be one. So it's not quite the right size yet, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Oh, there he is. There's that baby. Alfred, do you want to come on the table? Let me lift this up a little bit. Maybe I can get him. Is it going to wreak havoc if we put him down? Let's just do it. <laughs> okay. Let's just do it. He wants to come down real bad. There he is. Oh, there's a kitty cat. Oh, there he is. Not, not on Mama's computer. Not on the keyboard, Alfie. You find a nice place to sit. There's a kitty cat tail. Can you see it? There it is, waving around. There he is. Maybe he'll make an appearance at the end. You never know with that boy. Right? So there's a couple of questions. Um, <laughs> Alfred's tail is making the lights go all crazy. You get down there, baby. Let me get let me hand him back over. There we go. Oh my gosh, he's 14 pounds, that cat. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Um, so someone else was asking, it was a really good question. Um, uh, T, uh, Teresa was asking, well, Kate, what if I wanted to do this project with uh, thread, with string? Um, what would be the best one to use? And Janice is recommending tough cord in size two, which would work nicely. I would double it over, okay? I would double it. Um, so that you can fit um, both um, both strands through the pearls, but also so that it's nice and sturdy. Okay, so I see how now I've I've um, tightened. I want to tighten this down. You could also use uh, Ceylon micro Ceylon would be good, um, and you can also. Uh, but I would just check uh, and just double that thread over and try them through the holes and the pearls. Um, but I would say Tough 2 is great and Micro Ceylon Doubled also would be fine. So I'm just going to test that loop, see that, and make sure that it goes over the pearl. It's actually, I think, maybe three beads too long, so I'm going to take off three, check it again. And Janice is saying if you double it, you'd use Tough 1. Yeah, you could, you know, again, what I would say is you kind of need to test and try it out and see what works. Um, at, you know, check your stringing material at home. Tough 1 would be fine because you could, again, always double it. I'm a big fan of doubling my threads when I do something like this. So just for um, to make sure that it's nice and sturdy. So I'm going to go back through this crimp tube, see that, and see how I'm working with such a tiny bit of, um, of soft flex. I'm breaking all my rules, right? I should really uh, have a little bit more there. And so see, I'm checking it one more time before I crimp, and it goes through just fine like that. And um, Oh, Maggie's saying, I think Green Girl should make an Alfie charm. You know, that's so funny that you say that. Cynthia made a drawing for Chris for Christmas. Um, she drew, she made a little Alfie drawing. It's so, so cute. I bet I could get her to make an Alfie charm. Cynthia, if you're watching or if you watch on replay, expect a phone call from me <laughs> this weekend or a text. I'm going to come in and I'm going to crimp this down. And as I'm crimping, I, I want to talk to you about this because I am um, being kind of playing with fire here because I want to make sure, and this is so tiny, but I want to make sure that when I crimp that I'm not crimping so tight 
that my loop doesn't have movement. So you really want to make sure that when you're crimping, and if it's a long necklace, you're not going to worry about so much. You're not going to worry about it so much. But this here, you really want to make sure um, that you have that it's loose enough. So I'm going to clip away my extra, and now I'm going to I'm going to hold it close to my eyes here so I can cut it. And now I'm going to add another crimp cover. And you can see I'll I'll show you in the original and this one. And Vicky is asking the mix to my left. Vicky, that's the El Dorado Pearl mix that we released. We released at midnight this morning, actually 12.01 this morning, and it's actually already sold out. So I'm sorry about that, but that's why I've created this new mix called Gold Coast. So it's very similar, not quite the same, but I think it's also beautiful. So you won't be uh, as disappointed <laughs> to not have anything to make this project with. But don't fear, don't worry. I have more pearl mixes and we've got more curated boxes and stuff coming. So if you're not on our newsletter mailing list, um, we send out the newsletter, goes out at about 2 a.m. Pacific time. You really wanna um, be on that list because that's where we do most of our like communicating and stuff with um, like specials and things like that. So jump on the newsletter and you'll always be in the first to know. And when you are waking up in the middle of the night and not sure what to do, check your email and read our newsletter. That's what I do <laughs> when, at three in the morning. Um, so you can see here's the closure. Can you see that? So here's the loop. There's the wire guard and here are the crimp covers. And I think it's a nice closure. And let me show you how it looks on the El Dorado. The El Dorado was, the button was a little smaller, so the loop is a little smaller. Can you see that there? And the button is here, okay, on this one. So it works for any size button or anything that, uh, that works with that, okay? So that's that. Um, mentioning the newsletter and the blog, let me give you a final look of the project here. And then I'm gonna switch gears real quick before I, before I sign off. So here's the completed El Dorado. I've got it here. Oh, thanks, Mary Ellen. It's, this is a Damascus cabochon that I bought when um, I was in Tucson from um, a company called Grizzly Iron. He's a welder and makes these cool domestic cabs. Um, and yeah, so I just made myself something special out of it. Um, so here is the El Dorado necklace. Here, I'll show you that. And I'll show you the new palette, the California, not the California, go the Gold Coast palette that I made to go with it. There we go. Come over here, baby. There he is. There's somebody walking through the frame. You're blocking, you're blocking everything. Get out of, get, get Alfred. Alfred, Alfred, do there he is. I'm gonna hold them for a second so you guys can see it, okay? And then, um, Vicki, this one, yep, yeah, it's called Gold Coast, uh, the one that I made together. So, yep, and there goes the kitty cat, perfect. Um, I wanted to also tell you guys, uh, you go, you go, Alfred, here. I'm gonna have you go this away, down that way, there we go. Um, I wanted to show you, speaking of the blog, and speaking of the newsletter, and you're gonna wait till tomorrow for this um, because it's it's actually up on the blog now, but um, but wait till tomorrow so you can say, well, I don't know, but I would just wait and it'll give you some good things to do over the weekend because right now you're busy with this, okay? Um, the, uh, some of you may recall um, back last year in October, I went to film um, some episodes of Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels, which was really fun. Uh, Cara went with me, we had a great time. And I posted three kind of deep dives into the main projects that I did there. Um, I did two new twists on classic bead shop projects that we already have, and one brand new one. Okay, and so the new one uh, 
was sponsored by our buddies at Softflex. Uh, I did it for them as well. So you've seen, you may have seen on Softflex's social media. Uh, this one is called Eiffel Tower. And you may have seen, we talked about it a little bit already, uh, but you may have seen it on the bead table, one of our bead table members. And I can't remember who it was, Ellen. It might have been you. I can't remember. Someone did it. And it was just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Um, and it, it really a beautiful interpretation. The cool thing that I like about this so much, Alfred's hitting the camera, so I'm sorry it's moving a little bit. Um, the cool thing about it is I made in between these little girders, I made some openings that open like this. So the end of the lariat can go through those little openings anywhere like this okay so it's kind of a little secret hidden compartment that way okay like that so it was kind of fun and this basically uses tyla beads and bugles and eight ops right there and you can play to your heart's content with it but i call it the eiffel tower lariat okay so that's that guy uh, and again, they're all linked on the blog. There's three different blog posts about each of these. And they also have the episode um, uh, embedded in the blog posts. So you can watch the video for the Eiffel Tower. Then this one is Odyssey. This one's called Ancient Jade. And I will tell you, you guys, I love this colorway. Um, I used our straw hat button. I used our um, Irish wax linen and sage. I used some of our O beads, our cubes. I am in love with this one. So that one's up there, okay? And this one uh, is beautiful just as a necklace like this, or you can wrap it multiple times as a bracelet. And it is, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten strands. It's a 10 strand odyssey. And you can see what I did here was the tails I actually strung so they have like a little dangle here. I, I don't know why I'm so inordinately proud of this Odyssey. I just adore this uh, colorway. I just, I can't help it. I just love it. So this one's called Ancient Jade here. And then I made a fresh Bollywood um, and I called this one, this, this one Bhangra after the famous dance that they do in all the Bollywood movies. And I think it's perfect for spring and summer. It's a really kind of hot mix of colors. And again, uh, uh, the episode is linked on there on the, um, on the blog. So you can see all the colorways. It's linked to all of the product and stuff that we use. But it would be great for your weekend to jump in and take a look at those. Uh, we're going to have a fun, some fun things coming up this weekend, so it'll be a, a, a good time for you to, uh, to check all of those out. I wound this a little too tightly, so let me unwind it here so it doesn't look so, um, so stiff here. Yeah, the Odyssey, if you haven't made an Odyssey, and you guys, I'll be honest, this is like only the second one I ever made, maybe the third one I've made. Um, I love it. I love um, working with wax linen. If you haven't worked with, worked with wax linen, it's a great way to jump in for stringing. Um, and as Kim, Kim Crawford said, she said the Bollywood is always a fun, good feeling project. It's so true and it's perfect for summer. So, so we've done a lot. We've, I've accomplished a lot in this quick little free tip Friday that I've got for you, but thank you guys so much for joining me. I think I, um, I will move, uh, the camera around and you know, to find our blog, it's actually really simple. It's at the bottom of the homepage. If you scroll all the way down, there's a link that says blog. Okay. Super easy. But our blog is also called, it's called the bead table. So if you type in, in your search engine, bead table blog, it'll pop right up. It's right there. Okay. So you'll find it both, both ways. And you'll see, um, also this weekend, Drea is linking it and stuff in the, uh, in the newsletter. So, uh, Chris, is that baby kitty around anywhere? So Alfie can sign off with me. If he's not, we'll just have to miss him. Um, I hope you guys, um, 
enjoyed this episode. I had fun too. I and I'm glad for those of you who got the kit. I'm so stoked. I'm glad you loved it. Um, for those of you who missed it, I'm sorry, but I hope that Gold Coast will be a good uh, a consolation prize for you on that. And we're gonna have uh, some fun other things coming up as well. So uh, that won't be the last pearl kit that you'll see up here on the pages of beadshop.com. So thank you so, so much for joining me. If you loved kind of this color paletting session, um, you're gonna see me do a lot of color paletting on Wednesday as well. We're gonna talk about um, creating your own color palettes, how I create not only me, but how the team, how we create monthly mixes and stuff as well. So we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up. There's Alfred. Alfred is looking over at Chris, but look at everybody out there. Look at, look at how everybody's over here. There they are. Yeah, there. That's my baby. Look, he's 14 pounds. Isn't he big? He's so big. Some of you are new on this, and uh, you guys are so funny. Uh, uh, you've been kind of watching Alfred's... Um, I guess Odyssey with us from the beginning. Uh, a year ago, uh, we found him uh, under a bush at the cement plant, and he was just a little baby. I know he says, "He says, Mama, don't tell that story, Mama, don't tell that story." We had to bottle feed him, and everything. So, so we have we have him here. So it's Alfred and I signing off for uh, the weekend. I will see you Wednesday on Facebook Live. Have a fabulous, creative, and fun weekend, and we'll see you then, you guys. Thanks so much for joining me. Talk to you. Get this tail out of my way. Talk to you soon. <laughs>